Welcome to the deep dive. Okay, let's uh, let's unpack this. Today we're taking a deep dive into the fundamental concepts of GitHub. We're not just looking at a list of facts though. We're actually using insights from uh, practice questions for the GitHub Foundations exam. Really trying to uncover the why behind GitHub's power. That's right. And what's really illuminating, I think, is how these questions, they seem straightforward, but they actually distill some uh, really critical knowledge points. Our mission here is basically to extract the most important nuggets, you know, give you a shortcut to being genuinely well-informed about GitHub's core stuff. So whether you're prepping for a meeting, maybe just trying to get up to speed, or honestly just curious, we're here to help you understand not just what these features are, but really why they matter. Exactly. Think of it as a journey sort of into the heart of collaborative development. We'll hopefully uncover plenty of aha moments and maybe some surprising facts about how GitHub really empowers teams. Uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, let's jump right in. How do modern teams keep track of their work on GitHub? This is where it gets interesting, I think. What is the primary purpose of GitHub issues? Sounds basic, but maybe there's more to it. Yeah, you're right. It's definitely more than just like a simple to-do list. The core purpose um, is really tracking bugs, tasks, feature requests, that kind of thing. But if you connect that to the bigger picture, it's really about taking all that chaotic communication, you know, scattered emails, Slack messages, and turning it into something structured, measurable, actionable work items. Right. So it stops things falling through the cracks. Exactly. Issues give teams clear visibility. What needs doing? Who's on it? What's the status? It turns those kind of vague ideas into solid next steps. That makes total sense. Okay. So you've got these structured tasks. How do teams visually manage that workflow? you know, moving things like to do to in progress and then done, which GitHub project view is uh, best for that visual flow? Ah, uh, that would definitely be the Kanban board view. The classic board, yeah. It is. And it's incredibly powerful because it visually organizes those tasks into columns. Each column represents a different stage of your workflow. And it's not just about seeing what's happening. It's about making progress totally transparent to everyone. You can immediately spot bottlenecks. And it just fosters this shared understanding of, you know, the project's health. Fantastic. Okay, so tasks are organized. Now let's talk about actually contributing to a project. If you're looking at a public repository, maybe an open source project, who actually has the power to create a pull request, can just anyone do it? Well, the answer is pretty open, actually, is anyone with a GitHub account who forks the repository. Forks it, so they make their own copy first. Exactly. Forking just means you create your own personal copy of that public repository. It sits under your GitHub account, like your own sandbox. And what's fascinating here is how this whole model really underpins open source collaboration. You make changes safely in your fork, and then you propose those changes back to the original project using a pull request. It's a really powerful way to invite contributions from, well, literally anyone, while the maintainers still control the main code base. Okay, so once those pull requests start coming in, especially on bigger projects, how do you enforce quality? How do you make sure only, you know, well-reviewed, solid code actually gets merged, like requiring reviews before merging? Right, that's where branch protection rules come into play. Ah, okay. Yeah, and this really raises that important question of maintaining code integrity, you know, quality control. Repository admins can use these rules to enforce all sorts of requirements, things like mandatory PR reviews, maybe needing multiple approvals, or requiring automated tests to pass, all before any code can be merged into a critical branch like main. So it's like a safety net. Precisely. It's about building that safety net, ensuring consistency, preventing regressions. Yeah. Absolutely vital in professional development. And speaking of maintaining quality and consistency, Let's get into automation, yeah. GitHub Actions specifically. It feels like the backbone of modern CI/CD. What sort of events can actually, you know, kick off a GitHub Actions workflow? The two most common triggers um, are probably a push to a branch. So someone commits and uploads new code right. and a pull request being open. These events automatically start a sequence of tasks. Could be running your test suite, scanning for vulnerabilities, maybe even deploying your code. Okay. This is where that power of automation really shines. You know, continuous integration, continuous delivery. It ensures every change gets validated almost immediately. So beyond just those triggers, what are the overall sort of big picture benefits of actually using GitHub Actions? How does it fundamentally change how teams operate? Well, the primary benefits are definitely automating those repetitive tasks and uh, automatically running tests on every single code change. If we connect this to the bigger picture, 
GitHub Actions kind of shifts a developer's mindset. Yeah. You go from manual checks and just hoping for the best to more of a commit and trust model. Commit and trust. I like that. Yeah. By automating these common, often time-consuming workflows, it significantly boosts efficiency, speeds up release cycles, and really drastically improves code quality by catching issues super early. It basically frees up developers to focus on building new features rather than managing all the mechanics of testing and deployment. That sounds like a huge win. Okay, now, when those automated tasks need sensitive information, think secret API keys, auth tokens, that sort of thing, where do you securely store them so they're available to the workflows but, crucially, not exposed publicly? Ah, oh, right. You store those in GitHub secrets. GitHub secrets, okay. Yeah, and what's great here is GitHub provides this secure vault, essentially, to store sensitive data, like SSH keys, API tokens, database credentials. These secrets can then be safely injected into your actions workflows only when they run, without ever exposing them in your code or, importantly, your logs. It's absolutely crucial for keeping things secure in an automated pipeline. Makes sense. Okay. Shifting gears slightly, let's talk development environments. A lot of teams now want everyone working in an identical pre-configured setup, right? To avoid those works on my machine problems, which specific file is used to define the settings for a GitHub code space? That would be the devcontainer.json file. Devcontainer.json, got it. Yep. And this file specifies basically everything needed to create a reproducible development environment. It lists the tools, extensions, OS settings, whatever needs to be pre-installed. It ensures that when you or anyone else on your team spins up a code space, boom, it's ready to go consistently, immediately. Everyone's machine is configured identically by this file. Okay, and finally, let's zoom out maybe to the absolute foundation of GitHub, Git itself. What are the core advantages of using Git, this distributed version control system, compared to, say, older, more centralized systems? Well, the main advantages are pretty profound, actually. Git enables offline commits and history access. That's a big one. And it provides every user with their own full local copy of the repository. Right, not just checking out files from a central server. Exactly. In a centralized system, you're tethered to that single server. If it goes down or you're offline, you're kind of stuck. With Git, because it's distributed, every developer has the project's entire history right mm. there on their local machine. This means you can commit changes, look through history, create branches, merge, all completely offline. Wow, okay. Yeah, it drastically improves speed, reliability, and it allows for these incredibly flexible branching and merging strategies that are just, well, central to how modern development works. So we've dived into all these core GitHub features. It's pretty clear GitHub isn't just this standalone thing. How does it play with the, uh, the broader DevOps ecosystem? Which tools are commonly integrated with GitHub to really enhance those DevOps capabilities? Yeah, good point. GitHub definitely acts as this powerful central hub for development. Common integrations include CICD tools like uh, Azure Pipelines, Jenkins. These connect directly with your GitHub repositories mm -hmm. to automate builds, tests, deployments. Okay. Docker Hub is another big one, obviously, for managing container images. That integrates seamlessly with GitHub Actions for automated container builds and pushes. What's really fascinating is how these integrations let GitHub kind of orchestrate your entire development lifecycle, connecting all the different pieces of your DevOps tool chain. So it brings everything together. Pretty much. You wouldn't, for example, be integrating a text editor like Notepad++ for these kinds of DevOps pipeline tasks, right? Yeah. It serves a different purpose. I love how going through these specific examples really illuminates the principles underneath. It's not just about memorizing facts like for an exam. It's about truly understanding the logic behind how modern software gets built on platforms like GitHub and, you know, how these tools fundamentally improve the, uh, the human side of collaboration, too. Mm -hmm. Which kind of raises an important question for you, the listener, now that you've got these deeper insights. Mm -hmm. How might you rethink or maybe optimize a specific workflow or project you're involved with? How could you make it more efficient or more secure or more collaborative using some of these GitHub functionalities we talked about. Yeah, definitely something to think about. We encourage you to explore these concepts further. There's always, always more to learn and integrate into your own workflow. Thanks so much for joining us for this deep dive.